Hey there, let's talk about Airbnb and which ones you want to use. So when I say Airbnb, just general category of uh, medium to long-term rentals, basically. It can be VO, someplace you go personally to get something. It doesn't matter. I want to talk about what we're looking for. If you go to these sites like Airbnb, like uh, Vimo, I can't remember the name of the site, but like Airbnb, um, the uh, site is great with pictures, pictures of the building, pictures of all the bedrooms, sinks, everything in the building, tons of pictures, pictures of the outside, where it is, which is what most people care about. But us uh, remote workers that are traveling around, working and traveling and living together, um, all those things are not individually all together, um, we care about a little bit more because we're trying to work there. We want to know what the internet is. Now, I think most people can think about the internet uh, but something recently happened that uh, made me think a little bit broader, which was I lost power in my uh, place that I'm living at right now. You know, the Internet's great, but if you got no power, nothing's working. So I got lucky. The place I'm in had, has a backup generator, and it kicked on in, in 30 seconds to a minute, and I had power for the next two to four hours, I don't remember how long, I think it was only a couple hours out, while a good chunk of the city was dark. Luckily, the internet provider also had a, a battery backup and it was running just fine. So that was it was a non-event for me, but I didn't think about it before I moved in here. It was a non-event because I got lucky. So I thought I would talk about the two primary things I think as a digital nomad that we'd want to look at besides the location, location, location data. And, of course, that is internet and power. But people can talk about safety and security and all that stuff. That's somebody else's bailiwick. I'm a tech guy. Uh, let's talk about internet and power. So internet, is that's pretty obvious. Uh, what I do when I uh, book a place, I contact the host directly and say, hey, what's your internet speed? And I don't take their word for it. I ask them to literally get a phone app, um, the the internet speed test phone app there's a there's a bunch of them i give them the thing to pull it in as far as the the search criteria for whatever app store they've got iphone or android run a speed test on the wi-fi and give me a screenshot of it so i could see what it is now what speed of internet do you need i don't know i know what i like now um i think that in the u.s internet speeds become a um a status symbol or a competition, certainly with my friends. Maybe we're just sick, but you know, if, if somebody's got 500 gigabit, well, we got to go out and find a gigabit. You know, I'm sorry, 500 megabits, we got to go out and find a gigabit to top them uh, just for fun. I suspect that most people, if you're uh, just doing a regular online job and you're not moving a ton of data, 100 megabits is fine, probably more than fine, but I would consider that my base down. I've worked as low as uh, 2025 and worked there very long um it was a, a cheap spot at a really great location so i put up with it for a week or so but as a general i want to see you know the 200 uh, megabits or better why well i pull a ton of data back and forth across the internet and i care about upload speed as well as download speed so i check both you know, if you if you live in the U.S., you know, like the Comcast, we've got gigabit Ethernet, Ethernet coming into your house. But, you know, it's only like 40, uh, 40 up, and it's dog slow if you try to push a Docker image up to a repository uh, uh, 10 times a day for friends. So if you're moving data, such as doing Docker builds, duh, um, moving a ton of data, you need that fast upload speed. So you want to double-check both. Now, you know far better than I do what you need for Internet speeds. Um, I would get that in your brain, know what it is, you have a benchmark. Mine is 200 megabit. If I see 200 megabit, I'm happy. Can I work slower? Well, sure, of course I can. But I, tr I strive for 200 megabits, and you know what? I can find it, usually. Uh, I've got 350 where I am now. It's great. It's awesome, but that's bi-directional. So uh, when I'm sitting at a, a Airbnb with 20 megabits, I'm not really pushing a lot of Docker back and forth. I'm mostly doing meetings and 
and SSHing to a server back in the US so I can do all that work, which is another option. You know, if you've got a slower internet and all you're doing is, you know, you, you don't want to move a bunch of data, well, just SSH to, you know, something on Amazon or Azure or Google or back in your company over VPN, whatever. You can work that way if you want. I like keeping my desktop up and I tend to work from here. But you know, there's lots of ways you can slice this and certainly SSHing requires a lot lower internet speed than doing all the Docker work from your directly from your desktop. So you might have to adjust your work if you don't have faster internet, but you definitely want to look at that. You want to have a number in mind and you want to have a backup plan because sometimes your primary plan, your apartment, the internet goes out. Oops. Yeah. The uh, Airbnb host will get right to that next week. It's not good enough for you. Usually what I do is when I'm going somewhere, I have two backup plans. One is my cell phone, which I can tether SSH somewhere, probably even be able to zoom for the most part off a tethered laptop, but for you know moving a lot of stuff and builds, I'll just SSH to a different server somewhere and do it from there. Uh, the other backup that I typically scout out is a co-working facility wherever near my Airbnb. There's a ton of them out there. Um, I'm sitting right now, I think a mile from my backup co-working location. It's got great internet, air conditioning, it's a little lack, lacking the free food like some of them are. Uh, had the same thing when I was down in um, Mexico not that long ago. The uh, backup colo, Colombia backup colo in every city that I was in. The, these are relatively easy to find and they're cheap. It maybe want to go there for the socializing. I don't. I'm a grumpy old man. But I like to have my backup. And certainly when I was in Medellin, I had some issues in the apartment and I had to go to the backup co-location. And that was awesome. I got to meet some fun people and I kept working, which is really the key. Keep working. This doesn't work if your company uh, sees a drop in productivity. So primary plan, good internet. Backup plan, always have one or two. So power, like I mentioned, I lost power and I got lucky because the building had a generator. I will never look at a place that doesn't have a backup generator um, in Latin America probably. Now, if I'm only going to be there for a week or so and I can bounce around and go to the colo, sure, who cares? But if I'm going to be staying there for multi months, which is how I like to travel, then you want a backup generator. And I didn't think about that before I moved into this building. I got lucky, like I said. Now I'll be scouting those out all the time. Now the problem with the backup generator is that if you're actively working when that happens, you're going to be offline for a couple of minutes. Maybe that's no big deal. I mean, who cares? You know, stretch, go get coffee. Um, but if you're actively in a meeting, you're actively doing something, you will drop. And if that's a big deal for you, then you might want to uh, think about how you want to mitigate that. The way I mitigated it is I went out and bought a UPS. You don't need a particularly big UPS. You can power all your gear. Your, you know, when I say all the gear that you need to power, you need to power the uh, router coming in from the internet provider. Then hopefully you're also using a router of your own between all of your stuff and that. I don't trust something from somebody else. So I have my own router firewall between me and the Huawei products that the internet provider has given me. Then you want both of those powered. Then you need your, of course, laptop, desktop, whatever you have powered. And if you want to be seamless, you need your monitor powered as well. And any uh, auxiliary equipment that you may have, but that's it for me. Now, if you're powering your all those off a standard find off a shelf at any electronic store UPS, then it's not gonna last very long. You know, you're only gonna, especially if you got your monitor plugged in, it's only gonna last a few minutes. But a few minutes is all you need because your backup generator is gonna kick on. And frankly, a lot of the power drops only last a few minutes anyways. So if you've got your stuff powered, even if you don't have a backup generator, if you have a UPS, you can't survive them. But of course, the combination of both is best because the, the UPS will cycle through in some, in uh, I think, Six milliseconds, I think, is what they claim, which is uh, faster than the uh, 60 hertz duty cycle. So you're not going to see a drop in power. Your equipment will continue on. It won't be feel a surge or an up and down. It just goes along happy. Uh, then the backup generator kicks in, and it's no longer needed. So that you know minute is fine. And even with all the gear on, the the, the smallest UPS will 
will most likely last that, unless you're running some huge, you know, plasma monitor or something. So power is important, backup's important, and you need to bridge that that time for the uh, backup generator to kick in via UPS systems. If you don't have a backup generator, then need larger UPS systems uh, can bridge you for, you know, several minutes to an hour. You, you just do the power calculations, figure out how many watts you're pulling from all the equipment you need to run, find a UPS that provides uh, that much wattage for whatever time you think is needed for the area. Uh, I really like those diesel backup generators myself uh, because those can last for many hours. But, you know, if you're living in an area that has frequent but short uh, power failures, yeah, UPS is fine. So food for thought, besides the look, location, think about your internet, think about your backup plan, think about your power and a backup plan for your power. And that's all I want to talk about. I hope you find these videos helpful. Um, click subscribe if you do. Uh, I appreciate everybody who's uh, hopped on and I enjoy watching my subscriber count go up. And hopefully I uh, have a new video out about my uh, Ecuadorian visa at some point here in the next week. Take care. Bye.